Hello everyone, it's Beth and today I want to bring you my review on Be Different by John Elder Robinson. I have already written a review on my blog and I will link that down below, but I just want to talk to you for a few minutes about this book. It is entitled Be Different, My Adventures with Asperger's and My Advice for Fellow Aspergians, Misfits, Families, and Teachers. Now, when I read that title and requested this for review, I thought that this was going to be a little bit more of an article and then a little bit of his experience and then a discussion about it for each chapter. And I was very, very wrong. What happens is he gives us a slight introduction, just a couple of pages about what Asperger's is and how he was diagnosed when he was 40 and that there are three types of people those who are autistic or Aspergian is, he's Aspergian, so he just kind of lumped them all as Asperger's, which they're not. But Aspergian, proto Aspies, which are people who exhibit many, many traits that Aspergians have, but are not actually Aspergian. And then the neurotypicals or nipicals, as he calls them, which are quote unquote normal people. I myself am a proto-Aspian and I am proud of it. I love being a geek nerd person. Proto-Aspians are people who exhibit a lot of the uh, things that Aspergians do, however, are not actually autistic. Um, and he is a fairly high functioning autistic person, which most Aspergians are. Um, the difference between having Aspergers, one of the differences between having Aspergers and having autism is that Aspergians tend to learn to speak as quickly or possibly even a little more quickly than normal toddlers do. And so long about one or two, they're doing the normal few words. And then by three, they're starting sentences and possibly even earlier than that. Uh, while autistic children may never actually learn how to speak, depending on how severe it is, However, Asperger's does not technically exist anymore. They struck it from the spectrum and just included them in kind of the lower end of the spectrum in the year 2013, so about three years ago. Um, I don't agree with that. I think Asperger's is definitely different and they do still refer to Asperger's uh, patients as having Asperger's, so I'm not sure what uh, striking it from the records did, but you know, they did it. So. I enjoyed this book. I gave it about a three and a half stars. I don't really like the star system, but I did enjoy it. Just it wasn't the best read ever. Um, the things that I like about this book are that it's fairly autobiographical for him. What he's done here is every chapter he talks a little bit about some aspect of Asperger's that he has learned about in the 15 or 20 years since he uh, was diagnosed. And then he goes back and tells a story about when he was younger and that aspect affected him, but he didn't know he had it, so this is how he dealt with it. And so what we get is a couple of sentences about the Aspergian mind, and then we get a story about when he was 18 working on motorcycles and wanted a girlfriend really bad, but had social anxiety, and then we may or may not get a, this is how I dealt with it, or this is what I learned. Um, at the end, but the stories don't really give us any explicit, this is my advice to you. What happens is you get to the very end, literally the last chapter, there are four pages, yeah, four pages in the last chapter, and in those four pages, he gives you a couple of bold subheadings and a paragraph or two apiece, and those, I think there's four of them, each of those is like the main advice that you're supposed to take from his stories. And then at the very end of the book, he actually has an appendix wherein he defines and discusses what Asperger's is. So you go through the entire book with kind of a minuscule definition of Asperger's, and he discusses things like brain plasticity, which is where you're learning. And if you have more plasticity in your brain, it uh, allows you to learn a little bit more quickly, but if you start thinking about something, obsessing about something or studying something, it wears a groove into your mind so you remember it. And um, so he talks about that in a few places and we get 
a fairly decent definition of it. And he also talks about the mirroring effect, where if I smile at you, you automatically want to smile back because your brain is mirroring. But autistic people don't have those connections or they're not as strong. So you smile at a child with Asperger's and they may or may not smile back and it may take them a long time to do so if they do. And therefore you think they're being rude or they don't like you. Um, and it's not that, it's just that their brain's not telling them, oh, grandma wants me to smile back. And he discusses uh, that. So on the whole, there are some aspects that are discussed, but you really don't learn a lot about it or get his advice until the last, even with the appendix, it's the last 20 pages or so that he actually gets into definitions and advice. However, you can find some interesting things to pull from each of the stories. Um, things I didn't like, I've got my little card back here. It's not what I was expecting. It's more of a short autobiographical uh, story collection than anything else. Um, here's what I did, here's what I think. Mm, yeah, and then we go on and maybe a moral of the story at the end of a couple of them. And then I also have one that says, because of the way his brain works, there are some passages that refer to things that many people i.e. nipicals and even some proto-aspies, will find disgusting that are stated point blank because he doesn't realize or think about the fact that other people will find them disgusting. And that's how his brain is wired. It's in there and it's fairly bland to him and he doesn't really think about other people. Um, he also discusses in here about how the way his brain works, he just thinks about what he's thinking about, and um, he may think that television needs to have a show about trains on it, and he walks in, and the show's supposed to be on, but it's not, so he just walks over and changes the channel, even though there's four people on the couch watching a different show, and then he doesn't understand why they get mad at him, and a lot of the stories reflect that um, self-involvement. Um, he discusses that self-involvement in the book as well, so... The way it's written is very, very self-involved, but it's not supposed to be a memoir. It's supposed to be advice to you on how to deal with it. And so it comes across a little bit, look at me, look at me, look at me, instead of here's advice to you. Um, and I didn't really like the voice of the story. I have also read his book, Raising Cubby, which is about his adventures raising his Aspergian son. And um, that book was also a little bit self-involved, but that was more understandable because it was billed as his autobiographical account of raising a son when he found out he had Asperger's about the same time they found out his son did. Um, and I don't honestly remember much about it because of the style of writing, and I wish I had remembered that before I picked this up so I was a little more prepared, but what are you going to do? I didn't think about it, so there you go. Um, this book also does not speak about women. And women have Asperger's. In fact, John Elder's first wife, whom he calls Little Bear, has Asperger's. And he discusses her in a grand total of eight sentences in the entire book. He doesn't talk anything about how she deals with Asperger's, Asperger's, how anybody who's female might deal with Asperger's. He focuses on himself and there's not really, I mean, there are places that you can take things from the stories and apply it to the female perspective. However, for the most part, the only time females are mentioned are if he talks about his mom, if he talks about how mean his grandma was, or if he talks about when he wanted to have a girlfriend and he felt really alone, but he has social anxiety and all of these little rituals that autistic people tend to do that kind of chase women away. So it doesn't have a female slant to it at all. It can still be used with girls, but he doesn't refer to females at all. It is a very uh, hyper male book, which is fine, and I did enjoy it, and I would really recommend it if you would like to read anything about autism, Asperger's specifically. You'd like to learn a little bit more and see what it's like to be in the mind of somebody that has Asperger's. This is a good book to pick up because it shows you a lot of the things he had to deal with before he found out he had Asperger's and then how he coped with those. And I did enjoy it, just the style of writing and some of the ways he put things really brought it down for me. If you guys have any suggestions about 
books on autism. I am very interested in the subject. I like to read any articles and new findings that they come out with. I want to know that so that if I get back into the classroom and have an autistic student or I uh, run across someone on the street or I go hang out with my cousin who has Asperger's, then I'm prepared and able to handle things a little better than if I go in not knowing how to do anything with them. Um, I really don't want to alienate them. I want to make them feel at home and comfortable and then we can build a good relationship that way. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you have anything else to say, let me know. If you've read the book, if you want to read the book, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.